king lear means the drama king lear gender stereotype the traditional conventional views about men and women's role in society the play shows we would decide now with reference to whatever we know about the story of the king lear from our previous module the play shows that marriage is important to maintain social order and norm number 1 there is no space for extra marital relations sexual relations can only be possible within bound of marriage okay the sanctity of marriage shaadi ka taqaddus muqaddas rishta jo hai that is accepted in this play number 1 but some cultures now what is different from this play from the view of shakespeare expressed in this play in our in our times is that in some cultures these days people say that marriage is a kind of bondage male domination female subjugation aurte matahit ho jati mardon ke this is how they view it some cultures even talk against heteronormativity you know this term i have explained it already they say that how we decide about our sexual relationship this is not bound by being male or female we have other options as well this is called trans ideology you all know from media and from many other sources that people are talking so much about trans ideology transgender etc etc so this play is against such kind of religion so here we are talking about marriage and marriage is always between opposite sexes so heterosexuality is also recognized and accepted in this play number 1 cordelia talks about gender norms remember the last line no more no less than i love you as much as is required as a daughter no more no less and now here again i repeat those lines cordelia talks about gender norms when she says half my love with him with my husband and half my care and duty for my father and this is again the support for prevailing gender norms when i use the term gender norms you all know i am referring to cultural conventions about our gender relations and roles in society so this play is not against gender norms first part shows first part of this utterance of cordelia shows that her role as uh, uh, this is her role as wife and second part of this utterance shows her role as daughter her question about her sisters makes it clear she asks about her sisters that why have my sisters husbands if they say they love you all if they love you and uh, they don't love anything else in this world why are they having husbands their love is divided they are telling lies okay cadelia's stance is that a married woman has two personal roles as a wife as a husband but lear demands king lear demands undivided love that she refused and this is the stance that was not supported by the king he was offended he was angry and 
he banished, he expelled Cordelia from the court. That I need your unconditional love. That is not divided among your love for your uh, hubby, your husband, and your love for your father. The play, another point about the uh, relationship between uh, literature and gender that we find in this drama is that duty brings suffering for women. It was Cordelia who suffered for her parental duty. When the king was banished, it was she who supported her father in the hours of toil and trouble. Shakespeare keeps both roles of woman equal in this drama. The role as wife, the role as daughter for Shakespeare are equal in responsibility. Her love and care is equal for parent and husband. Her duty is equal for both. And if suffering comes on way in both roles, they are part of duty. She would accept that. On the male side, if we see from this play, what is equal is, what is equal in husband of Cordelia and his fa her father, that is also equal. And what is equal between those two male people? Authority and obedience. Both demand of obedience and authority. Whereas she gives love and care to one and love and care to the other. The play shows imbalance in relations and duty when this imbalance is demanded as Lear demanded in the play, so there are always troubles and tragedy. And the end of this drama verifies this fact. Goneril and Regan negate duty to father and that results suffering of that. This is imbalance. Just one side is chosen. They are loyal to their husband and they negate their duty to father and the result is father suffers at hands of these daughters. They expel the king out of palace. The king, when he negates Cordelia's duty to husband, I need your unconditional loyalty for me, love for me. The result is suffering of both the king and Cordelia. Both suffer because of this imbalance. The play also shows that the king negates fatherly duty two daughters and divides kingdom. Now see another point. The king negates, overlooks duties, responsibilities of a father. He is dividing kingdom not just to favor his daughters, rather to get rich and influential sons-in-law. So again, he is, the king is getting males for daughters. He is supporting male gender indirectly. The play also shows that marriage is necessary to avoid social exclusion and stigma. This is another uh, subplot in the drama, a parallel story of the same type in the drama. We call it subplot. And this is story of Gloucester and his son Edmund. Gloucester was friend of the king and Edmund was son which this person got through extramarital relation uh, with uh, a woman. Now here too we are told that marriage, only marriage can save us from social stigma. The people who have extramarital status and the offspring they don't get recognition, respect in the society. So another point is importance of marriage. Marriage should be based. Now here criterion of marriage is also given. Marriage should be based on love, not dowry, as the husbands of Gandril and Regan. 
दे वर ग्रीडी दे वर आस्किंग फॉर मैरिज जस्ट फॉर डोरी जहेज एंड अशी दिस इज एविडेंट फ्रॉम द जाइवलरी फ्रॉम द कंपिटिशन बिटवीन किंग ऑफ फ्रांस एंड बरगंदी बरगंदी वॉज highly greedy and france he was uh, actually he had true feelings for lord so this rivalry in the drama shows that we should we should opt for marriage just for love for establishing a family not in greed of dowry or material gains or wealth or money etc so we conclude that gender is not just a matter of difference and power everywhere in written discourse in literature in drama in poetry wherever we talk about gender we always talk about uh, one is powerful the other is powerless no gender can be seen in terms of social roles and responsibilities and this is what we should we should understand about gender gender norms what we conclude should be respected